Hey y'all, it's Speedy Potato, uh, back again today to talk to you a little bit about the Pocket SDVX Pico V5 firmware. A few people reached out to me asking how to update um, keybinds and lighting, so I thought I'd put together this video so that you can kind of follow along. Um, first things first, what you'll need is to set up the C++ SDK for the Raspberry Pi uh, Pico or RP2040. I'm gonna kind of glance over this because it kind of depends on uh, Windows, Mac, or Linux. But basically, you will come here and in the table of contents, you will see towards the end, using other integrated development uh, environments, here you need to, yeah, build on other platforms actually is right, right here. So Mac OS, uh, the tool chain installation is probably the biggest hurdle to get this done, but what you want to do is you want to go through this, um, make sure you can install the Pico examples uh, from GitHub, which is Raspberry Pi Foundation's kind of example directory. Once you can get that building, um, you can go ahead and go to my GitHub and find Pico Game Controller. Uh, if it's no longer here, you can probably go to my repositories scroll down and find it somewhere here. And here is where all the code lives and a little bit of a description. What you want to do is you want to make sure you select Pocket SDVX Pico V5 Develop. This one is the one for V5. Uh, without V5 Develop, this one's the one for V4. And this one's just like a basic 2DX one that I put together really quickly. So you go to V5 Develop go here and you want to download the zip so make sure you're on the v5 develop and download the zip and what you'll get is you'll get this folder so in documents i have the pico sdk so the pico game controller is a folder that sits right next to the pico sdk and then what you want to do well pretend you don't have this open what you want to do is you want to open up the visual studio developer command prompt if you just type vs code into search it'll come up and then to launch it you'll type code this is kind of already uh, explained in the raspberry pi documentation and just first things first uh, make sure you can build it so it might prompt a thing here asking what you want to build it with you want to make sure you want to build it with the uh, gcc arm uh, compiler. So we build it. Shouldn't take too long, but make sure it's 100% successful. Okay. Um, there's going to be a few folders. What we're looking for is SRC, which is the source files for um, all the firmware. And I'll go over uh, key binds first. So Let's close all. There we go. So first things you want to look at are controllerconfig.h. This is where you set all the parameters for basically the controller. And I'm not going to go over everything, but what you want to know is that switch key code is what's bound to each button. So, you know, um, Right now, by default, this is D, this is F, this is J, this is K, uh, C, M, and then we skip two of these because um, for for uh, E Amusement Cloud, it wants to skip two of them, and then Start is the one button. So, if you wanted to change this one to anything else, you can. Go ahead and replace this one with, uh, you know, let's say if for some reason you wanted a uh, O, it'd just be H I D key O. And if you wanted to actually see what keys are available, you can at least on Windows Control click. It'll bring you to H I D dot H. So you see Documents Pico S D K. This is the library that usually should come with the S D K. And there's a whole list of H I D key codes. Um, from you know A to Z, 
enter escape backspace and whatever. So you just want to copy whatever you want. So if you wanted, you know, arrow right as this one, actually the next one. So if you wanted button B to be arrow right, you would just put that here. So this is button A, button B, button C, button D, FXL, FXR, and you skip to, this one's a start. So that's how you would do that. Uh, I think that is about it for key binding. Next is a little bit harder. I wanted to talk about how to do the RGB. So there are a few things you need to pay attention to. There is an RGB include.h and color cycle v5 is probably the one you want to start with. Let's see. Unfortunately, I may take programming a little bit for granted. So for those of you without programming experience, don't worry about it too much. I'll see if I can walk you through this. So we'll make a new file and we can just call it, uh, I know people want a static colors, so we can just call it static color v5.c. Seems like a reasonable name. And for now, we'll just select everything from color cycle v5 and we'll put it in here. And I'll go over this really quickly. Uh, let's see, you should not need to really tweak anything up here. What you might want to consider though is that switch label colors, so this is, you know, the switch label colors. These ones are currently white. For example, um, this is the R color, this is the G color, this is the B color. So we'll RGB together, if they're at maximum value, which is 255, it turns white. Let's say you wanted uh, the start button to be blue. So this is red, this is green, this is blue. Uh, what you can do is you put zero here and you put zero here. So the red and green will be zeros and the blue will be maximum. That means this start button will turn blue. You can probably, let's see. Here we go. So Get this working. You can probably go into a color picker. It won't quite be exact because the color of the plate is about a little bit yellow. So the color that comes through is filtered a little bit, but you get pretty close. So you can just go into a color picker in Google, find whatever color you want. You see there's an RGB value, RGB. So let's say if we wanted um, the buttons to be like, kind of like a teal blue, you can do this. So button A, button B, button C, button D. Let's say you wanted to make it this color. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in here. And then we can do the same for the rest. And let's say FX, we want it kind of like a pink color. We can do that too. Nice. So switch colors, same thing. Switch colors means it's the reactive color underneath each switch. So underneath each switch is RGB LED. They're the same RGB LED. Just one set to red, one set to white, and one set to blue. So you can do a similar thing with the labels, but for the switch LEDs. Um, so we can like literally set them to something ridiculous. Let's set them to like a, a yellow. Actually, let's do a green. This is gonna be one terrible looking controller, but this is just to show what you can do. You can change into whatever color you would like. All right, so that's that. You do not need to touch this one. And let's see, so there's a lot going on here. There's kind of like a few main things to do. I haven't looked at this code for a while, so 
the hair with me. Yeah, so I believe there's a color cycle. Is there a color? No. Well, here you see there's peripheral RGB. Okay. Base color. Ah, let me check this one. Yeah, so this one, basically, RGBT T base color is just the color that the controller will be set to for everything around the periphery. And right now, it's calling this thing, which basically, every time I give it a different number, increment it one, it will change the color. That's what's slowly giving the color cycle effect. So if we don't want to do a color cycle effect, here's what you can do. You can do this RGBT base color. So this is the type and this is the name. It's fine. Just copy me. Base color dot R equals and let's say, let's say you wanted a light blue for the background, right? Let's do this. Equals 82. Base color dot G equals 249. Base color dot B equals 255. Um, since this is C, it's very picky. Make sure that after every line there's a semicolon. Otherwise, it's uh, not going to be happy with you. Uh, you can see here I adjust the brightness. There's a little brightness variable up top right here. This one was intended to uh, limit the power draw for some computers. I was only trying to draw around 500 milliamps to match the USB 2 spec. If you want, you can, you know, make this all the way up to anywhere from zero to one. Um, I'll do 0 0.5 for now. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to know how much power you're drawing without a meter. So uh, change this at your own risk. 0.5 is pretty safe. So try to stick to there. And uh, I think that's all you would have to change here. Ideally, nothing else needs to be done. So you build it. Make sure it builds correctly. Cool. Now if you go back to Pico Game Controller, uh, your build, your firmware file will be in build uf2. Um, if for some reason, if you look at the date modified, it's not building here, it's probably failing some copying because this gets copied from build src pico game controller uf2. So this gets copied into this folder just to make it easier to find. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a try. To flash, you just want to hold this button and plug it in and it's going to show up uh, as a removable drive, rpi-rp2. You know, what you can do is you can just take this and drag it in. And, ah, classic, I forgot. So I was mentioning RGB include. You want to go ahead and add another line here and include the file name that you just added. So include quotation marks static color v5.c okay so that way this will be included uh, let's go ahead and change this as well because this is no longer color cycle i'm just going to do static so ws2812b that's kind of like the protocol of the leds static meaning not changing and then v5 
Uh, and then you'll have to go into Pico Game Controller. And you'll see here there's an RGB mode switching. So this is the RGB mode. Currently it's set to uh, Color Cycle V5, this one. So since we have a new name for this one, we wanted to pull this one. So you just go into here. Leave that little at in the beginning and change it to your WS2812B static v5. All right, let's build that. Oh, okay. Sure, I did not like that. So since we have the same variables in here it is not happy that's fine go ahead and since we basically copied it over it's complaining we're duplicating things so just delete the color cycle v5 out of the imports and this should work yeah and now you've swapped over the whole color engine uh, I need to go back into flash mode. And there you go. Now you kind of see uh, we set these to kind of like a pinkish color, remember? These ones were, I think, a green or bluish color. This one's just straight up dark blue. Uh, that's not any better. And then, if you look at the reaction colors, reactive LED colors, these are now like a funny looking green. And we can also test our changes to the keyboard mode. So if we go to controller config, right? So the first key should now be O. In order to get to keyboard mode, remember you hold down button A, you plug this in. And now we're getting button O for this one because we changed it. You also change this one to the right arrow. So I click this one and now it moves to the right. So that's it. Uh, hopefully this was informative and hopefully you can follow along if you if, even if you don't know any programming um, but yeah good luck and if you have any questions go ahead and put in the comments I'll talk to you again soon